Hello folks, thanks for joining us today and welcome uh, to the next episode in our 1000 euro electric vehicle build project. Uh, for those of you just joining us now, uh, I would recommend that you watch some of the preceding episodes uh, for a full detailed fill in of the project and its goals, but the very basics of it is that I am attempting to perform a electric vehicle conver conversion on a 1996 BMW E36 uh, for 1,000 euros or less. Now, in our last episode, we went through the build process for the power stage of our DC motor controller, uh, which you see here on the bench uh, in front of us and we're doing bench testing here uh, with a 32 volt uh, battery pack and a standard 12 volt starter motor uh, to simulate the traction motor in our vehicle. So when we last left you uh, we had some driver problems with the IGBTs as you would expect and we were just simulating the 8 kilohertz PWM signal uh, using a piece of test equipment. Now, since then, uh, there was a circuit published on the DIY electric vehicle forum uh, by a gentleman by the name of Tony Boggs, at least that's the forum name uh, that he uses. And it was a, to me, an absolutely fascinating circuit um, with a few very simple and cheap components. Uh, he was demonstrating how you could create a logic uh, circuit uh, based on you know, uh, completely analog uh, design um, to drive uh, the, the power stage, um, so to, to translate throttle commands into PWM commands and do things like have overcurrent limiting and um, throttle, you know, mapping to a degree and stuff like that. So I took that uh, circuit, uh, made a few modifications to it and came up uh, with the logic board that you see here. Um, I got a few of these made. I don't know if it's going to come out too well, but it's uh, probably way too big for the number of components that I have there. I made it a four layer board too, just for uh, stability purposes. Uh, but it probably could be made half that size and two layer if you were worried about the few few extra euros of cost. Now I didn't kind of hold out too much hope but uh, the boards turned up and li literally just there last night I threw some of the components on and uh, to my amazement this thing just works. So with that completed uh, I went ahead and tuned the IGBT drive, um, so we've got a reasonably good drive signals uh, now going to our IGBTs. Uh, we can run them with throttle control and we're very near now to being in a position to put all of this stuff together and put it in the car to see how it's going to drive. Now, one of the things here that I suppose some of the more eagle-eyed amongst you may observe is that there's a component missing here. And the reason for that is I had ordered all the com components, or so I thought, because uh, I was away um, for a week there, and when I came back I thought, oh, I've got all the components now. So I went on, I started putting the components on the board and I'm missing one. So I jumped on the component supplier's website 
and they tell me the component has been dispatched. I think, okay, well, where is it then? Only problem is, it's due to arrive on, I believe, the 19th of January, 2019. So I've had to just go to a different supplier to get that part. Uh, the circuit still works, only problem is the overcurrent limit won't uh, shut the PWM generator down without that part. But for the bench testing we're doing here, that's no issue at all. Uh, with the components um, that are currently in here, and a Lemhas 300S current sensor that we have connected, uh, we get a overcurrent shutdown a little bit over 700 amps. Uh, that can be changed just with a resi resistor value change in there, or you can change the current sensor. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility in there for, uh, for what you would want to do. Also, you know, whatever kind of throttle uh, that you might want to use. You can change some of the components here and you can tune that throttle to do what you want it to do. At the minute I've got my trusty E46 Hall Effect uh, throttle pedal and I give her some juice. The motor runs. So, other Things that we have on the board is a little switch mode 5 volt power supply so that provides a good stable power to the PWM and all the other circuitry here. Runs the LEM current sensor, uh, runs the IGBT driver and provides 5 volts for our throttle pedal. Um, other things we've done here is to put a brake input. So that if you press the brake pedal, it will shut down the PWM regardless of what the throttle command is. So a few little things like that. And I've already thought up about another half a dozen uh, things that I would like to do here uh, to make this a little bit safer. But certainly before I get into refining it, I'm just pretty much going to use... Uh, this design here and put it in the car and see how the car drives and you know figure out how we need to uh, tweak the circuit or or you know whether it's going to work out practically for us so basically uh, that is the brief description of what we've got going on um, I'm going to show you guys a few oscilloscope shots now in a minute um, but just to let you know uh, this design, uh, so the board design, all the design files, all that kind of thing uh, is now freely available on my GitHub for people that want to follow along. Uh, there will be a link in the description to that. And I've also put the few spare boards uh, that I have here uh, for sale in my web shop. Uh, so there will be a link in the description to that if you just want to buy a, a board and stuff some components on. Uh, pretty much made everything as straightforward as I can. Uh, there's just screw, screw terminal block and all of the terminals are reasonably sensibly labeled. Um, so as I say, our test setup is pretty much the same as we had previously. Uh, in the previous episode, we had uh, a slow turn on problem with our IGBTs and we had a ringing problem uh, with our turn off. Now, a uh, few people had messaged me about that. Um, so I just want to very quickly run through for the kind of nerds amongst you, uh, how we basically solved that. Now you never solve those two problems entirely. Uh, what you do is you get them to a point that they're not gonna blow up. Um, now we had originally used 22 ohm uh, resistors in the gate um, so in order to uh, speed things things up I've changed those to 10 ohms so those are the blue the four blue resistors hopefully that you can see there and in order to vary the speed of the turn on versus the turn off, we use a high speed uh, di diode. 
so that the gate sees 10 ohms turning, um, no sorry, the gate sees 5 ohms turning on uh, because the two 10 ohm resistors are in parallel and it sees 10 ohms turning off because the diode prevents current flow through one of the parallel resistor branches. I would recommend um, having a look at the circuit diagram uh, so that that will make a bit more sense for you. And again both this board and this board are on the GitHub and freely available uh, for, for people that, we, that wish to make them or simply just follow along and uh, you know check out the circuit diagram and you know see what's going on there. So all right let's go have a quick look at the oscilloscope and I will run the motor and show you guys uh, what we have got going on here. Alright, so I hope that's going to be visible. Uh, so what we've got here, we've got two traces on our old Scope screen. Uh, the top trace, the yellow trace, is the voltage across the switch. So the collector emitter of the low side IGBT in the brick. That is what's actually doing the uh, switch on and switch off of the power going to our motor. And the bottom trace, the blue one, is the PWM as being supplied from the logic board to the IGBT driver chip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just give a little bit of throttle and then I'm going to freeze the oscilloscope screen. Now, so, let's have a look at this trace in a bit more detail and you'll see what's going on. So let's expand one side of it a bit and we'll have a look at the turn on. So, alright. Now, so the blue trace here is basically when the PWM uh, commands the switch to turn on. So that's fairly, this is where we turn on the power stage. And the yellow trace is where the power stage responds. So um, we're currently off here. And if we look at our uh, time base, we're on 500 nanoseconds per division. So if I make that a little bit easier to read, I'll just pop that onto one of the graduations and you will see that we have a propagation delay here from when we command I've broken my multimeter yay so when we command the switch to turn on it's about a 500 nanosecond delay before uh, the switch starts to respond now that's being caused by a lot of things um, most uh, would be the propagation time within the IGBT driver chip and so forth. Now then after about 500 nanoseconds uh, we get a pretty good turn on, a little bit of a ring down towards the bottom because we are uh, turning the device on pretty fast. If you look here you know we're probably turning on in we probably got the device fully on in about 500 nanoseconds as well so about a one microsecond delay from when we say go to when the device says yep I'm on now that's not too bad so let's go to the turn off so our switch is on everything's happy we're sending power to the motor motoring along in our automobile now let's get a look at this now go here so then we say to the switch okay let's turn off so again by the time that we have fully commanded the switch to turn off here um, about 500 and the switch is starting to turn off just about here so about 750 nanoseconds um, maybe a little bit less actually Probably about 500 nanoseconds the switch is beginning to turn off 
and it's taking it there's 500 probably it's taking it about a microsecond to get a you know a reasonably full turn off now you're going to look at this um, overshoot here and the ringing and I know that a lot of people are going to be saying to me Damien you're doing it wrong that's going to blow up and you're going to kill 200 school kids on their way to a petting zoo okay well that's pretty extreme like bordering on disproportionate if you don't mind my saying but anyway um, this isn't going to kill 200 kids on their way to a petting zoo because let's think about it here for a second. We are going to be running with a DC voltage of about a maximum of 150 to 160 volts. Our transistors are rated to 600 volts and our capacitors, uh, the lowest one is rated to 450 volts. So yes, we do have a turn off spike here. Uh, we do have a good bit of ringing. In fact, it would be interesting to look at the frequency of that ringing just for the real nerds amongst us here let's go have a look at the frequency of the ringing I'm already losing subscribers now as we speak let's have a look at it here there's a trough there and let's get another trough and it's curious there we go close enough so we're ringing at about 800 kilohertz so that will be a product of the inductances and capacitances uh, that we have on our dc bus um so it's just you know it just is what it is we could spend a good while trying to design out all of this and we'll probably you know you go one way you'll slow the turn off um, to the point that the transistor starts to turn back on again as we saw in the last episode and if we speed the turn off up any m more um, this spike will reach for the stars and then we would kill a transistor not a busload of school kids on their way to a petting zoo now with that um, out of the way let's get rid of the cursors Oh, the scope's moving. Stop moving scope. Back to measure. And let's have a look. Let's dial it down a bit. And let's see when that ringing... Let's see where that ringing kind of gives up the ghost. It does ring for a good while. Let's go over there and make it easier. So when we get a turn off here, we're at one microsecond per division. So we're ringing, you know, fairly substantially up to, I'd say, about four to five microseconds there before we damp out. There are things we could do, like varying our bus capacitances and things like that to make that more or less, well I should say more palatable, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to live dangerously, because if you saw my previous video in the Nissan Skyline, you know that I'm a dangerous kind of a guy. Now, that's enough of this boring theory. Uh, let's unfreeze the scope and let's uh, give it some gas. So let's see. That's now. I want to get a bit more. I want to get a bit more view for you guys here. Here we go. So right now we're just motoring our. Let's take it down a bit. I'm gonna.
Alrighty folks, so I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Uh, in the next episode of our 1000 euro EV build, uh, we will have that controller hopefully installed in the car and will be in a position to at the very least move the car around using it uh, to see how things are progressing. So we'll be getting away from the theory on the bench and a bit more of the old you know driving around stuff. Now uh, do have a question for you the internet that you might possibly be able to assist me with. Uh, as you can see I've got my track helmet and my track gloves but I have a bit of a problem. When I put this thing on, my two earlobes get pushed downwards and no matter what I do to fiddle it or mess with it, I can't get those earlobes to pop up. So I'm guessing there's some kind of a trick to, the, to this and uh, if you guys could post a comment there on how to unpop my earlobes, uh, that would be great because fun though it would be to be... Um, you know, careening the Panzer around Mondello Park with my earlobes pushed down. Um, yeah, I'd rather not. So, that being said, don't forget to tune in. There will be special episodes for our upcoming track day. Um, in the meantime, check the links in the description for GitHub where you can view all the design files for this and indeed all of the other open source projects that I've been working on. Um, also links in the description to my Patreon and PayPal uh, link should you wish to financially support my particular form of insanity. I will ask that you don't because it just makes me do more of this stuff and make more of these crazy videos and things like that and let's face it that's the last thing anyone needs right. Um, what else? Yes, other link in the description then will be to the web shop where you could buy one of those boards uh, if you wish to build your own controller. So we will see you in the next episode and until then, happy analog circuit design.